Grace and peace, freedom, friends and family. We thank you so much for joining us on today. My God, you are in the right place on today. Listen, our Bible tells us that in Romans 1:17 that those that are justified by God through Christ Jesus shall live by faith. It then goes on to tell us that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. But it then asks, how can they hear without a preacher? So listen, you're in the right place today because God has placed an anointed voice here in the earth for us to hear so we can grow our faith. So whichever platform you join us on today, be it Facebook, be it Twitter, be it Periscope, be it our website, we want to say thank you for being here today. We ask that you please like, please share, please comment. Let us know how the word of God is changing your life because we know that as this word gets into you, it's going to affect everything in you and your life will be for the better. We're now going to go to our worship and arts ministry as they prepare to give us a song of praise. And then following that, we're going to have our own bishop-elect Hedgeman is going to preach a word from heaven so that we can now grow in our faith. I'll be right back after the word. Awareness Month, an annual campaign designed to increase the awareness of a disease. 
a disease that takes so much from us and our families. One in eight women in the United States will be diagnosed with breast cancer in her lifetime. But not only does it affect women, it also affects men. This year alone, 42,170 women will die from breast cancer in the United States. And a few of the common psychosocial issues that survivors face are fear of recurrence, grief, depression, and body image. Relationships, work, and spirituality also suffers. While we can't prevent cancer, it is important to be proactive about our health. Studies show that physical activity, a healthy diet, and a decrease in alcohol consumption can all reduce the risk of breast cancer. If nothing more, 2020 has taught us that we are all in this together. So while we remember those who have lost the fight to breast cancer, let us support the survivors by calls, texts, sending flowers, or whatever we can to let them know that we are all in this together. Let us bow our heads in a moment of silence for those who have succumbed to this disease. On behalf of Bishop-elect and First Lady Michelle Hedgman and Womax Ministry, we would like to honor our breast cancer survivors. We thank God for them. We give glory and honor to God for them. And we pray that God will continue to let them live and let them thrive and let them survive and everything that they do that they shall prosper in it and be in good health. Hi, hi, happy Wednesday to you. God be praised. I don't know about you, but it makes a difference when I've received the word on Wednesday, the life that's in that word helps me finish the week and let alone prepare me for those unexpected challenges that lies in Thursdays and Fridays. I'm thankful for your time. We thank God that you are valuing the importance of being taught the Word of God and keeping your heart and your mind and your life under the Word. Prayerfully, this series has truly been a blessing to you as tonight we will conclude it in the final continuation of part four. However, before so, please be reminded they, uh, concerning the importance of voting. November the 3rd, we are less than a week away. And so we've already asked you to do three things. One, we've asked you to schedule your time to vote. Don't just uh, expect it to happen. Schedule it. There's so many challenges that may come up. It may be raining. Your feet may be sore. You may have a headache. I need you to schedule it and stick to that schedule. Secondly, I need you to go ahead and identify your polling precinct, proper place where you are to vote. Uh, you can check your voter registration card. Uh, you can call down to the county, give them your name. And then thirdly, thirdly, I need you to make sure on Tuesday that you travel with your proper form of identification so that nothing will cause you to get there and impede your ability to cast your vote. I'm counting on all members of freedom and our friends to make sure that on Tuesday you vote. Now listen, you may sacrifice a lunch break. It may take all the time you had set aside for lunch to get that vote in and get back to work, but it's well worth it. Please, Please make sure that on Tuesday, November the 3rd, that you make sure your vote is cast so that it can count. Well, again, we're talking about part four. Who told you it was over for you? Who told you it was over for you? Let's go to Acts chapter 10. Amen. We're going to look there in verse number 38. Acts 10 verse 38. Amen. Amen. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, and with thanksgiving 
I'll be a living sanctuary, Lord, for you. And with thanksgiving, in spite of what's going on, tell him, I'll be a living sanctuary, Lord, for you. One more time. Not with frowns, not oppressed, but with the joy of the Lord. And with thanksgiving. I'll be a living sanctuary, Lord, for you, 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 sanctuary, yes, God, Lord, for Sanctuary, ah, glory, Lord, for you. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. Finalizing our series on the spirit of oppression, who told you it was over for you? We told you at the onset some seven messages ago. This series is designed to help you find freedom from hopelessness, heaviness, and hesitation. We're going to put the objectives up here tonight because I've been reciting them every message. But tonight we're putting them on the screen because... Please, I have not done my job if you have heard the word, meditated on the word that you heard, and still lack answers, clarity in these four objectives. So now, in reflection, those of you who have been true disciples, students of the word of God, those who are really walking in kingdom, you should be able to speak to rather, hey, I got it or I did not. But here are the objectives that we sought and tonight continue to seek to make clear, plain, and receivable, yet alone applicable to those who were here. One, it is to proclaim the will of God regarding the spirit of oppression. To proclaim, to make it known, to preach, to announce the will of God concerning the spirit of oppression. So we, uh, do we understand that now? Do we know what God's will is concerning oppression? The second thing was to denounce the spirit's harassment on the mind and its function. Talked about the hesitation that it brings. To convey a blueprint of triumph over trauma and abuse. We dealt with how to forgive and what we should forget. And then, fourthly, to usher in revival to your will to accomplish new and new and unfinished things. So as we pro progress forward, something I want to say tonight that was stated when Sunday that's so important, it is this. It is the expectation of good that defeats oppression. Now, oppression in some of our lives appears very randomly. It may be a holiday or something, may, something has to happen that really affects you. Or normally the feeling of heaviness, the slowness of your will. You know, you're overachiever. Nothing gets in your way. You get everything done. You set out to do. You may be one of those kinds of people. And only over time, randomly, does oppression visit you. There are others in whom 
oppression uh, visits regularly. And so those of you who know the things we've talked about in this series, the things that have been conveyed in this series truly fits you. It's one of your thorns. It's one of the devices that the enemy continues to try to use to deviate you or hinder you from fulfilling God's plan in your life. If that's you, then it's important that you, that you understand that you have to regularly, all right, expect good. Even if it's internal, even if it's regarding yourself. You say, when I start to expect things from other people, they don't come through, they let me down, and then I'm ending up right back in the same place. Well, you got to expect good from God and then expect good from yourself. Because keep in mind, we're talking about you. Who told you it was over for you? And so we defeat oppression when we expect good. Praise the Lord. And we already said in the series that you got to start expecting God to do things without your participation. Amen. No longer can you just have expectations for what you're working on that, that has your hands involved. Amen. We got to begin to believe God for some things we know we cannot do. Praise the Lord. Why? Because expectation, having expectation, having a spirit of hopefulness, praise the Lord, helps us defeat oppression. Let's go to Psalms 27, verse 13. Psalms 27, verse 13. I've got to be expecting good. Praise the Lord. Expecting good. Look what David said again. He said, I had fainted. Unless I believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. He said, I would have fainted lest I was expecting good. Praise the Lord. So there it is again where what helped him from fainting was his expectation of good. Now, we stated a prayer, a short prayer. A microwavable prayer at the conclusion of Sunday's message that I want to repeat today. And I think it should be our corporate prayer this week. It's something we should pray, something we should really uh, re rehearse, all right, but, but yet in faith. And it was this, God give me the right perspective of me through the lens of belief. God give me the right perspective of me through the lens of belief. God give me the right perspective of me through the lens of belief. So we talked about the various forms of lens and we talked about the uh, actual lens. We talked about the opinionated lens. We said there's all press lens and then there are belief lens, which is what we're referencing in this corporate prayer. God, I want to be able to see myself in a right perspective through the lens of belief. So let me ask you a question. How important are belief lens to our perspective? Think about that. How important are belief lens to our our perspective or to your perspective come on i want you to even though you're there alone let's act like this is somewhat like a group interaction a small group setting and go ahead and state even in your own setting how important you believe belief lens are to your perspective okay all right personally okay now I will share. I believe belief lens are, and I'm using this word, this choice of words intentionally. I believe belief lens are mission critical to our perspective. I believe it is critical to you staying on the mission, you succeeding on the mission, and you finishing the mission and the next mission and the missions of your life. I believe without belief lens, we can easily be derailed or abort missions and the mission presently that God has us on. 
that's my that's my uh, response to how important I believe belief lens are to your perspective and to my perspective. Just in case you don't fully feel the weight of how critical belief lens are, just look back at this verse again. Uh, Psalms, watch this now, verse number 27, verse 13. He said, I'm going to read it one way, and then I'm going to do something here. Uh, he says, I had fainted, would have fainted, unless, okay, or lest I believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Now, just to help us see how important belief lens are to our perspective and to our abilities to have our will revived, amen, to finish and to accomplish new and unfinished things. Uh, look at what this verse would read if you took believe to see out. If you remove the belief lens from this verse, it would read, I would have fainted and not seen the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wow. I would have fainted. I would have been overcome by oppression because I didn't have belief lens, because I did not uh, practice seeing through the lens of belief. I would have fainted and would not have seen the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Belief lens, hear this, which is what we're going to hear me use this expression tonight, a believing perspective. We're talking about belief lens. We're talking about you having a believing perspective. Everybody else looking at it like, oh, uh, uh. you're looking at it like, why you don't see it? Why we can't? Why it's not possible? Why I can't? Okay. That's a believing perspective. Okay. A believing perspective. Just like our R138 campaign, you know, where we are, are seeking to uh, reduce our mortgage this year by $100,000. It's a part of an aggressive nine, eight and a half year payoff of our new facility. And some people say, oh, that's, uh, I don't know, that's uh, paying off. There's people, you know, why, why, why would you do that? A, a believing perspective. Why, why can't we? Praise the Lord. Amen. We've done it before. Why can't we? And why won't God do what he's done before? As we're making things, as people are making things happen for the house of God, he's making things happen in your house greater than that you made happen in the house of God. So why can't we? It's scriptural. Why can't we? That's a believing perspective. Amen. A believing perspective. Now, belief lens or a believing perspective, hear this, will always magnify possibility. I'm going to say that again. Belief lens or having a believing perspective, amen, will always magnify possibility. All right? When you have belief lens, what, what is going to be magnified to you? How it is possible. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I said through belief lens. It may not be easy. It may require some other things. It may take a process. Praise the Lord. You may have to wait on some things to finish before it can start. Hallelujah. Amen. It may include some participants that you may not be fond of. But if you got belief lens, what's going to be magnified to you is the possibility. Every household need to look at their 2020 and 2021 plans and dreams through belief lens. You need to look at, amen, the biggest mountains right now in your life through belief lens. You need to look at your greatest debt, I feel God now, through the belief lens. You need to look at that foot or that knee or that elbow that constantly hurts in pain. You know, that limb that is seemingly losing activity through belief lens. Because when you look at things through the lens of belief, you have a believing perspective and what is magnified through the belief lens or within the believing perspective is possibility. So I'm going to repeat it again. Belief lens, a believing perspective always magnify possibility. Thank you, Lord. 
magnifies. David had a believing perspective. Oh, be quiet. Folded the lie of hear you. Where are you going? What you doing here? You been to go do what? I think you need to reconsider that. Just, oh, put on all this armor. Come on, put this on. Oh, yeah, I, you, you, need, you need to take everything I got. Take my best armor. I, I, I dare not send you down there without, without everything I got. Oh, God, already thinking that it's a lost fight. But David had a believing perspective and what stood out to David how it was possible he told Goliath even he said you come here with a sword you come here with weapons but I come in the name of the Lord God Almighty hallelujah who he is the head of heaven's armies he had a believing perspective. Oh, I feel God right there. Some of you, glory to God, you've been trying to figure out how to connect to the next, next peace in your life. You've been trying to figure out, glory to God, how to find that grace. Amen. You say, I don't have a grace. I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm in a lost spot. You're trying to connect to the power of God again. And this is the very thing God wanted to be deposited in your understanding, praise the Lord, and to bear witness with the Spirit of God in you. You've got to, glory to God, release faith for a believing perspective. Hallelujah. Now, listen at this. Please hear this. Whenever you're freed from oppression, the first thing that leaves is impossibility thinking when you're freed from oppression when that spirit no longer has influence oh God over your perspective no longer has its weight glory to God sitting on your wheel no longer praise the Lord causing that spirit of delay to, to, to move in the way you think move in how you respond move in how you act when you're freed hallelujah by the power of the anointing, glory to God, through understanding, praise the Lord, through impartation from the spirit of oppression, the first thing that leaves is impossibility thinking. And when oppression is gone, you start to look at stuff like, why has that been sitting here? Why have I had this on this porch this long and hadn't done nothing to it? Why haven't I, go ahead and, why haven't I gone, went ahead and put a nail in that and fixed it? Why haven't I gotten a can of spray and just sprayed the paint on it? Amen. In the areas where, where, where it's rusty and where it is peeling, why have I let this handle sit here and remain dangling uh, like, like this is some poverty zone and hadn't just gotten a screw and screwed it in it? When oppression leaves, the first thing that leaves with it is impossible thinking. So instead of you seeing all these things like they are simply impossible, like, oh, God, this is just the way it is as though, you know, um, d d d d you know, you're just hopeless when you get freed from oppression. The first thing that leaves is every thought, amen, that you had been made to believe, which is a lie, to be impossible. So what's the first thing that leaves? When we're freed from oppression, I need somebody to write that down. This is good. It's important that you know this. Impossibility thinking. Now, I want to give you a slide here on perspectives and possibilities, okay? A slide here, and this slide says, anytime, hear this, a negative thought comes into your mind, change your perspective. Again, any time a negative thought comes in your mind, change your perspective. Now, let, let's, let's be honest how this works, especially when oppression is at work. You don't go seeking those negative thoughts. Be honest. Those, those thoughts just show up. You know, it's like you were minding your business. You were literally working, and there was a negative thought that somebody's mistreating you. That was a negative thought. That you're going to die early. That was a negative thought. You know, that it's going to be a rough night tonight. That was a negative thought. You, you didn't seek that. It wasn't even, come on, let's be honest. It wasn't even on your radar. But out of nowhere, this negative thought seen sought to instill itself within your present. Now, this is what is called 
projected thoughts, thoughts that are projected upon you, okay? You, these are not your thoughts. You weren't even thinking along these lines. You was not even in that area or field, but it has been projected upon you. Like, 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 like these thoughts are, are seeking to force themselves on you. Those are called projected thoughts. And you have to, praise the Lord, uh, know. See, this is the word of knowledge. You have to have knowledge and understanding of what these thoughts are, how they work, so that you can manage your mind, your thoughts, your will. Remember the soul? Oppression resides within the soul. That's, why, that's a part of your thought life. And so in order for you to be free from this, you've got to recognize when negative thoughts are being projected or forced upon you. Yeah, you got to believe, oh, they lying, they lying. No, listen, they don't care about you. They see him lying to you. Well, is that the spirit of God? Or, or, is, that a, or is that a negative thought? Amen. Yes. And then not only is there, not only are there, excuse me, projected thoughts, but then another thing that leads us into oppression that we have to be willing to change our perspective regarding is what is called preferred thoughts. Preferred thoughts Okay, speak to really what you prefer or how you prefer it. Okay, it, it usually flows fluidly in the lives of people who assume a lot. Well, I thought you knew that's what I wanted. Well, I thought you knew that's what I meant. Well, I thought you knew uh, that's, what I, that, 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 that's what I was trying to do. Because your thoughts, that's what you preferred for them to know. That was your preference for them to understand. That was your preference for them to already know what you was trying to do. But that, that's a preferred thought. Now, let me help you here because preferred thoughts will trap you into oppression. And prefer, trap as in keep you there. How? When oppressed, hear this, when oppressed. When the spirit of oppression is working in one's life, preferred thoughts cause them to only prefer that which is easy. Listen now. Anything that's not easy is not preferred. But I want to help you. Just because it is not easy and just because it's uncomfortable, this is what I need you to hear tonight, talking about this believing perspective, does not make it impossible. So again, just because it's not easy, just because it's uncomfortable, doesn't make it impossible. I remember oftentimes, uh, I mean, it's like regularly in our home, First Lady loves to rearrange furniture within a room and move in tables around and change this around. And oftentimes she would come get me and say, hey, I need your help on this, da, 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 da. Immediately when walking into looking at the room, I'm like, that ain't gonna work. I'm like, ain't nothing wrong with it. Why you wanna change it? You know, uh, that, that, that's not gonna fit. This room isn't big enough. So the first thing I begin to do is give every reason and every rationale why it won't work. And it was in preparation of this series that that analogy brought, came back to mind. There are times when we did rearrange things the way she preferred them and the way she had them in mind, and it looked better and everything fit. Now, I was saying it wasn't fit, going to fit, and it wasn't going to work because I did not prefer to move anything. So because it wasn't what I preferred, because it wasn't what I preferred, I began to see the idea or request as something that was outside of my comfort zone. And just little by little, in a matter of moments, I began to recognize how uneasy it was to do. And now I began to campaign against the rearrangement as something that's impossible. Only because it did not line up with my preferred thought. And whenever you are oppressed 
And whenever oppression is working in your life, your primary preferred thought is easy. And that's dangerous because there are very little things that's going to come along your life's way that's going to be easy. And if you define everything that's not easy as impossible, you will accomplish little and there will be a lot in your life left unfinished. But God is reviving our will to accomplish both unfinished and new things. So I've got to be very conscious of projected thoughts and I've got to be willing to, amen, uh, uh, separate from the preferred thought of easy, glory to God, if I'm going to continue to move progressively and if I'm going to continue to be and you're going to continue to be futuristic praise the Lord hallelujah so you got to understand that a lot of things we said was impossible was simply because amen it was simply because glory to God we were we were under oppression and the first thing that I'm speaking prophetically now you better catch me in the spirit the first thing that has left your life is impossibility thinking hallelujah Hallelujah. I hope somebody said I receive. I said the first thing that has left your life is impossibility thinking. I need someone to lay hands upon yourself. This is not just an exercise. This is you coming into agreement with the divine order and plan and power of God say glory to God one thing come on hallelujah that has left my life come on repeat it after me say one thing yes that has left my life come on one more time say one thing that has left my life is impossibility thinking now say Lord I thank you for delivering me I said say Lord I thank you for delivering me from impossibility thinking so now being timely is not impossible. Did you hear me? Daily meditating on the word of God. In spite of your work schedule, in spite of, oh God, the shift you work. Daily meditating on the word of God with your four children is not impossible. Growing in the scriptures, hallelujah, is not impossible. Let me help somebody who's still, uh, 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 who's single and, and desiring of a husband. Let me, let me come against that impossibility thinking. Listen, being discovered. Here, I, girl, I got to find me a man. Well, you out of order right there. The Bible says he that findeth a wife. So your prayer is to be discovered. Glory to God. So being discovered, single lady, even at your age, I'm helping somebody, your weight, Oh, God, your income, hallelujah, your current credit score being discovered is not impossible. Submitting to a budget is not impossible. Oppression had you thinking that. No, living your life with the budget, identifying how much money you have weekly to spend, knowing what your disposable income is monthly, biweekly, or weekly, and staying within that. Unless it is a schedule permitted uh, vacation or trip or expenditure, you can do that. Staying within a budget is not impossible. Finishing what you've already started is not impossible. Prospering in the midst of opposite. I know everybody at work don't like you. It's no secret. You don't have to say it. We already know it. I know there are people, praise the Lord, in your line of work that's shooting for you. I know what it's like, praise the Lord, to be the target. Everybody's reaching for you. You're the standard. But guess what? Prospering in the face of opposition is not impossible. Improving your health by diet 
See, that was oppression had you thinking, oh, I can't, I can't eat right. Oh, I can't get up and walk. Oh, Lord. Find all kind of reasons. Oh, God, the concrete may be too high. Oh, I can't get up and walk. Oh, Lord, the carpet ain't the right color. I can't get up and walk. I ain't even got my toes nails painted. You're coming off right. That was impossibility thinking. But now, praise the Lord, you got to understand, thankful be, thanks be to God. You've been free from impossibility thinking, and improving your health by diet is not impossible. Let me say this one to all of us. Being better is not impossible. Oh, I'm not done enough. I ain't changing no more. You better watch that. That's not the language. Glory to God of the Spirit of God. Being better is not impossible. Accepting your husband's child and grandchild is not impossible. Yes, you've got to understand oppression made you believe that those things were impossible. Forgiving your wife for how she messed up that money 20 years ago is not impossible. See, when we just oppose, which means to put side by side for the sake of clarifying, comparing, Amen. And drawing safe and accurate conclusions. When we just oppose hopelessness and hopefulness, we've already discovered that hopelessness says it's over. When you're hopeless, it says it's over. No matter what you're looking at, it's over. And no need of you trying, no need of you applying, no need of you even getting started. It's too late. It's not going to happen. Three years ago, maybe, you ain't tall enough, you ain't short enough, you're not fast enough. Oh, hopelessness is going to always promote over, being over. It's over. But hopefulness says, I'm not over. And we clarify that there's a difference between thinking that it's over and then knowing you're not over. So this is something I want you to begin to do, and I'm almost done. I want you to begin to challenge every internal thought of impossibility. I, I want you to start living that way, where you challenge every internal thought of impossibility you know just like you don't you don't sign stuff without reading it if i just come up to you with some papers on the folder and over the folder i say i need your signature right here this is regarding you know all of the assets you have this is regarding you know uh, uh your children's uh welfare and their future i just need you to sign right here just like you don't sign stuff without reading it it's time for you to not believe things unless you read it so if I don't read it, and if I hadn't read it, here, I'm not going to believe it. If the Bible doesn't say it's impossible, I'm not going to believe that it's impossible. So I've discovered we don't need to believe anything that's being projected, preferred, stated, or anything that we had once believed in our past that possibly could have been driven by oppression that, that we have not read in the word of God. Last slide, please look at this. It says perspective. What you see, what you see, depends not only on what you look at, but also on where you look from. He said it depends on where you're looking from, not just what you're looking at. But where you're looking from. And I'm just, I, as we challenge these thoughts, we got to begin to look at ourselves. Hallelujah. And we got to challenge impossibility from looking at it from the scripture. Don't look at it from comparing yourself to someone else. Don't look at it from how someone else's journey happened and they were, they were much younger than you. Somebody else, they were able to do it and they was in a different career. Stop comparing yourself to other people. L challenge those thoughts of impossibility and begin to look at everything in your life from a scriptural perspective. When you begin to look at things from a scriptural perspective, hear this, you develop a believing perspective of self. You can't look at your life from the scriptures in faith through the lens of belief and not develop, hear this, a believing perspective of self. 
Somebody say that with me. A believing perspective of self. I have a believing perspective of me. Hallelujah. You need to have a believing perspective of you. You must have a believing perspective of you. Philippians 4 and 13, our last scripture, and I'm out of here. Philippians 4 and 13 has been an incredible series. God, I've enjoyed it. It says, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Most people, they say this so often. Oh, this is their motto. Oh, you see this in their bio. Oh, if they get a promotion. Oh, my favorite, and their favorite scripture is found in Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, which reads, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Hi, this is brother so-and-so, and his greatest scripture that he loves from the word of God is I can do all things. And we say that, we quote it, we write it, we put it in stuff, Pertaining to us, but do we live it? If you are living this, if you are looking at this scripture right, you'll have a believing perspective of self because the first thing the scripture says is, I can. What does it say? I can. So I cannot be born again, and my first impression of self is impossible because the Bible says if, if, if Christ hallelujah is in your life the first thing is I can so that's not the that, that, that's the center you you've been redeemed from that blood has been applied to your life there's grace now on the new regenerated you and the regenerated you understands I can and so no longer should your first impression of yourself be, I can't. No, no, you can. Glory to God. You can be better. Glory to God. You can continue doing. I don't know how long this is going to last. They better enjoy it. I'm going to mess up after a while. I'm going I'm to do this all wrong. I'm, 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 I'm going to mess this product up. I can't work on these machines and still continue to do this. Oh, I messed up on all my last jobs. No. That, that's, 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 that's flesh. That's sin. That's, that's, that's the penalties of the past. Those are effects of sin. You've been redeemed now, and now that Christ is in your life, you can. So your first initial impression of yourself is, I can. I need somebody to put that in the chat. I can. Come on, I need you to say it to yourself while you're typing it. I can. While you got your phone in your hand, putting it out there on Facebook and putting it out there on YouTube and putting it through the app, I need you to say, I can. Glory to God. I need you to say it to yourself again. I said, I need you to say it to yourself again. I can. He says, I can. I'm almost done. He says, I can. Watch this. Do all things. What, what, what can I do? All things. What, what, what you said you can do? All things. What, what are you saying you can do? All things. Listen at this. Which means nothing is impossible. Hallelujah. I can. Your first impression of yourself is that I can and that nothing is impossible. Now God may say no, but it don't mean it was impossible. Hallelujah. Nothing. I can, what? Do all things. Watch this now. Do all things, look what he says, through Christ. Please hear this. I can through Christ. You can through Christ. Your can do is connected to Christ. Oh, that's good. Somebody need to write that in your notes. Your can do is connected to Christ. My can is connected to Christ. Your can is connected to Christ. So the moment I quit reading the Bible, the moment I quit medita meditating on the Word of God, the moment I quit looking at what the messages were, I'm lost in the series, I'm not spending any time with God, I'm not praying, the moment, glory to God, I lose connection to Christ, I lose my ability and my can do because our can do is connected to Christ. He says, which strengthens me, which means connected to Christ, we're both strengthened beyond our incapabilities. We are strengthened to change impossible. 
Because he says, watch this, what you can't do, I'll strengthen you to do. So he strengthens me. And so our believing perspective of self requires, praise the Lord, hallelujah, that we see ourselves through the scriptures. For again, we said it, what I hear repeatedly, I'll start to believe. I'm closing my Bible. And what I believe, you'll start speaking. And what you start speaking, you will begin to see. I want you to understand that after hearing, having heard this series, God wants your soul liberated. He wants your soul revived. Meaning God wants you free and alive. Say that, free and alive. Come on, make your tongue say what the Spirit of God is saying. Free and alive. So that's why many things have been declared in this series. Many things have been declared in this series. Now you've got to turn those declarations into confessions. You've got to say the declaration in faith consistently. That's what a confession is. You've got to say what has been declared throughout this series in faith consistently. So I have declarations. I've got my confessions. And then cultivation. Cultivation says, listen, I'm going to stay right here on this teaching. Even though there's some other things to come, I'm going to be a student of that. But the things that I know God spoke here that I needed, that touched me, that freed me, that registered with me, that convicted me, the stuff the devil didn't want me to hear, the stuff my flesh tried to rise up against because it was freeing something in me, cultivation says, I'm going to stay right here on this until the Holy Ghost says different. Declarations. That's my job as the man of God to be speaking things over your life. Much has been declared in this series. That's the beauty of having a shepherd. Somebody speaking some things over my life. I, can, I got something to become. Confessions. I got to start saying what's been declared every day. Consistent. Then cultivation. I got to stay right here on what the Holy Ghost has brought to my attention until the Holy Ghost says different. And then supervision. I got to just defend this stuff. I got to stay on top of the management of me and the management of this freedom of oppression. If I do nothing else with it, if I don't stay on these things, it'll come right back. But if I manage, if I supervise it, I'm free indeed. Then a couple of times you need what is called some spotcations. Not a vacation, not a vacation, but a spotcation. You need to have two hours within your week, two hour interval within your week where you just unplug. It's going to help you from being oppressed, overwhelmed. Two hours within a week where you just unplug. Amen. Now lift your hands. God, thank you for the word. Thank you for understanding. Thank you for what you've spoken into our life on tonight. You know, God is not something that just <laughs> may have made us move a certain way or holler a certain way. But God, if we receive it, if my other brothers who are watching receive it, if my other sisters who are watching receive it, and if they take the next step to end their study, meditate and pray, God, I thank you. We will have found freedom from hopelessness, heaviness, and hesitation. Our will has been revived through understanding to accomplish unfinished things and new things. God, we thank you that just like you anointed Jesus, you've anointed my man of God to declare this word to heal me and many others from oppression. God, I thank you that through this series, truly you were with me. And I thank you that lives has been and will continue to be changed. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Have a great rest of the week. My, oh my, what a tremendous word. We thank God for Bishop-elect Hedgeman for being able to hear from heaven and be able to disseminate such a powerful word to his people and to all the people of God. We thank you so much for joining us on tonight. Listen, we ask now that you please like, 
please comment, please share. Let your friends know that there is a voice that is hearing from heaven. There is a watchman on the wall and God is speaking directly through him for his people. Listen, if you're unsaved, we ask now that you please pray with us. Allow us to lead you into the family of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. These days are not guaranteed to any of us. So we want to take this time out now to pray a special prayer for you so that you can now join yourself in the family of those who are saved by our Lord Jesus Christ. So please bow with us now. We ask that you please repeat after me. Lord Jesus, we ask that you please come into our lives. God, we thank you now that we understand that we are sinners. Yes, God, we are separated from you because of our sin. We ask now that you please come into our heart. Change our lives, God. Make us who you have created us to be so that we can be a part of your family. We decree now that Christ Jesus is our Lord and our Savior and that he died on the cross for our sins. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We know that if you have prayed that prayer, God is now a part of your life and Jesus is now the Lord and Savior of everything that connects you. So we pray now that you please write us, email us, text us, let us know that this word is impacting your lives for the better so that we can all join in together and celebrate the victories God is doing through you, to you, and for you. We thank you so much for joining us on tonight. We will leave you with this that God is still in control no matter what man thinks, says, or believes. We give God the glory for everything. God bless you. Good night.